Now, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing cosmetic surgery in Nigeria, and we still have Dr. Anifo Oshie with us. Now, if you are watching, please tell us if you've done any body enhancing surgery, and if not, are you considering one? Let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet at us at Thoughts TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa 1 with the hashtag Ways, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. So, Dr. Anifo Oshie, thank you so much for staying with us. Um, yeah. So I, I, the question I asked before we went on the break was about, you know, what are the right things we're supposed to start to know? You know, because uh, whether we like it or not, cos cosmetic surgery is here to stay in Nigeria. People would go to meet the doctors. I want a bigger bum. In fact, somebody saw me the other day and said, did I do something to my bum? I did not do anything to my bum, you know. But people would come and meet you, you know, to come and do surgeries like suctions and all of that. So what are the right questions and what are the things that we need to know? You need to see where they did their training okay okay it's not all the plastic surgeons in nigeria that understand has ever seen the machine used for liposuction do you understand hmm. so because i'm a plastic surgeon does not mean i can do liposurgery and because i'm a general surgeon does not mean i cannot do liposurgery like i said it's cosmetic surgery cosmetic surgeons draw from all areas of specialties so if you walk into a doctor's office ask him where did you do your training for liposurgery? Because we don't do that in Nigeria. We don't have a department of liposurgery or liposuction or cosmetic surgery in University of Lagos or any other university in Nigeria. Uh, the doctors that practice it either come in from America, UK, uh, other parts of the world to do it in Nigeria, or locally, the locally trained doctors will go out and get their training. I got my training done in Dubai in 2016 and i have built up on my uh experience by going for an annual continued medical education so every year every summer i take time out to go you know learn the new things that they have in cosmetic in my particular area which is liposuction you know the new development in it and every time we go the first topic they teach us is how do you avoid problems you know so the first thing you look for uh, in a doctor is, doctor, when was the last time you got certified in ACLS? ACLS is advanced cardiovascular resuscitation. So when a patient is having difficulty um, with breathing or with a heart attack, what can you do to save that patient? Mm. What have you learned in the last year, in the last, you know, you want to see evidence of those things. Um, we were talking about facilities. You want to see what the theater looks like. Uh, what will happen if they put you under general anesthesia and you don't wake up? What is their next plan? Do they have an ICU in the facility? Do you understand what I'm saying? So those are the things you would generally ask. Uh, a lot of Nigerians want the best at the cheapest price. <laughs> like surgery is not cheap. It's not for the masses. Okay. So if okay, someone is doctor. doing two for one, watch out. Doctor, I'm um, considering the price. I think it is quite expensive so considering the price do you think the results by any means are permanent or do i have to come back to for renewals okay. it depends i was talking to a woman today who was who who is a hundred and thirty kilogram okay. versus a woman who is 70 kilogram the woman who is a hundred and thirty kilograms i won't do her first i'm going to advise her to go do some weight loss and then come back but some surgeons will tell her, listen, we'll do you, but you have to come back maybe once or twice before you can get that shape. You can't get it done at once. So considering the price, the cheapest way to go about it, if you're looking to have the hour sh hourglass shape, is to first make sure you have the ideal BMI. We, the ideal BMI for surgery is 32 BMI or less. You don't want to, you know, so there's a difference between obesity do you understand? And overweight and proper weight. Do you understand? So if you come in obese, I'm going to advise you. It's it's harder for you to 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 um um uh, what's it called recover from liposurgery because you have that excess weight to deal with. Um, it's it's actually one of those things surgeons need to look out for. You know when they are selecting their patients. So patient selection is very important. And that affects the price. Um, so the cheapest way to go about it, if you are on the big side, is first lose weight yeah. to what you want to look like, and then go to the surgeon. And then he'll take out the excessive fat and then put it in your box and 
I was the places where you want to that 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 <laughs> Let me bring Temi in first. We've not heard Temi in a minute. Temi, are you there? Timmy, I'm right. Are you are you craving for our glass? So, you know, are you I, craving for our glass shape like me? Timmy, she's not hearing. Um, breastfeeding after breast augmentation. You know, I, personally, I just find it to be quite unsettling. Like, is it really safe? Because I gathered that sometimes, you know, after a woman gets breast implants, it even affects the amount of breast milk that she's able to produce. Um, is it really safe for the baby? Because that's like a foreign body. Right there in your body, right by the mammary gland, that's like silicone. Sometimes, should you really be breastfeeding a baby? I'm, I'm just curious. Well, um, that is a decision that is made between the patient and the mother. Okay, um, there are some implants that does not affect breastfeeding at all. You know, the silicone they make these days does not affect uh, breastfeeding at all. There is no correlation uh, between um, breastfeeding and silicone implants, the new silicone they are, they are making right now, you know. So, but the decision has to be made between the mom. Some moms will tell the doctors that they have finished, uh, that, you know, having all their children uh, and they don't plan to. And then the next year they get pregnant and, you know, they want to breastfeed and they're not ready to take out the implant, you know? So we'll discuss the risk with them. The risk, the risk is there, but it's not that bad. You know, I think it's less than uh, one, 1%, one you know, in terms of uh, transmitting the silicone uh, wow. material into the breast milk. Oh, that's just scary. <laughs> Tell me, okay, okay. Uh, me. Um, what age scary. do you think is advisable <laughs> to embark on this journey? What age? Because I know quite a number of teenagers are also doing this. And do you think it's advisable for teenagers? Because they still have growing bodies. So what do you think? Yes, they're still having growing bodies. Yeah. So teenagers, I don't think they should be doing that right now. Um, they are too young. Their body is still growing. Uh, they should be taught about uh, self-love and how to... Oh. Um, you know, lose weight. I think a lot of them are just obese. If Doctor. they can lose the weight through diet and exercising, uh, they should be fine, you know, until they are matured enough to make their own decision. I don't think they should be... Will you reject, uh, if you get a teenage patient, honestly, honestly, will you reject that person? All right, so I am in the process of dealing with a teenage boy that has gynaco master. That's when boys have breast like and it's really affecting his uh, self-esteem okay. all we're going to do is look anesthesially uh numb his breast and suck up the fat that's it mm. uh, he's doing that with his mom in the room it's not anything big we're not cutting him up and we're doing it specifically because of uh self-image is having you know doctor, they're making fun of him in school they're bullying him in school doctor and I that's a reason to do for uh, like for surgery for, or cosmetic surgery. Doctor, I loved, you said something very profound, self-love, right? Mm -hmm. If my son is having breasts, shouldn't I be teaching him how to carry weight? So the breast now converts to muscle. So I'm just wondering, like, have we gone to that point where it's almost like this is the Quickly. laziest option, you know, to take, you know, as I don't want to work out. I can do all the things I want to do. I can indulge. I have a friend though. I spent millions to go and get her tummy talked. And now the tummy, I'm looking at the tummy, she's, she's, looking, she's looking pregnant. Now I'm wondering why did you spend money to, to take out something that you're not disciplined, you know, to maintain? So, I mean, why are we, why are we not teaching people to, you know, to just go the hard way, discipline yourself, and why are we just going, may I feel cosmetic surgery is, is just a lazy man's way, you wait, know, wait. to <laughs> But doctor, before <laughs> to you solve answer that question, before you answer that question, my also question is, um, Uwa, do you think everything can be fixed with um, exercise? No, let him answer. Doctor, Doctor. yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying you should answer. Do you think? No, no, no. It's the last option. So this is after we've done diets, we've done exercises, and we've done it really, you know, we've done it with all our power and might. And then if we can't get rid of that little pouch, you could do liposuction. What about a bum? Is my bum going to grow with exercises? Yes, now, squat. Are you sure? That's what I did. <laughs> 
I mean, everybody's this asking squats, me. But you, know, you, you might not, you might not, realize? you can't compare squats to what we get. Doctor, don't of, worry, uh, I'm not, you know the funny thing, the box, you know, honestly, um, I do not even know where they crave for this hourglass cup. Do you know, I find it irritating that I'm walking down the road and somebody's turning their head to look at my butt. <laughs> I actually don't find it comfortable. So I don't understand where all this crave for body, well, I know where it came from. It came from the Kardashian family because they mm -hmm. were the ones that brought that, you know, curvy look. To the limelight and everybody embraced Crazy, it with everything yeah. that we have so i i don't know you it's your job so i i would not ex, i would not expect you to you know to tell me that i don't need it but i know i don't need it but now for the people that need it um how well because um part of the story that tammy was trying to talk about the doctor that went south and fat transfer can everybody uh undergo fat transfer can is it safe for anybody to do it so can i move fat from my thighs to my bust and to my bum is it safe you know you are the experts maybe you should let us know i might just come to your clinic because i want that one <laughs> okay. my thoughts. So, so fat transfer is is very simple okay. so fat transfer means literally fat transfer we remove fat from the belly mostly and then we put it superficially in the right places in the hips and in the butt okay. and sometimes in the breast now let me advise you the one in the breast does not is a 50 50 chance if you want to do a fat transfer to your breast because we don't have a lot of v blood vessels you know supplying blood to the breast so when we put the fat there ah uh, there's a 50 percent chance it that it won't stay. stay you know but it is an option for women that don't want to put an implant hmm. they don't want anything foreign in their body and it's quite common in, in the uk right now and actually in most of Europe now, they are doing more of uh, fat transfer to the uh, breast rather than having an implant. Okay. Tammy, are you there? <laughs> okay, if she's not there, can I take that question? Okay, a go quick ahead. question. Uh, but I've heard a so surgeon. Right. Yes. Go ahead, yes. Tammy. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, I was just very happy that uh, there were two things that you you said that piqued my interest. Yeah, you talked about having a male client or patient, uh, as you would call it, because you know you're a medical practitioner, and then that comes to. I mean, I'm just like, wow, do men actually do that? Because I find that it's really us, the women folk, who tend to crave for the surgery. Um, all the time. I might be wrong, I don't have the statistics, but you don't find a lot of men to, you know, to do that. So why are we exactly like, who are we trying to look good for? You, you know, and, and again, you noted self-love, which, you know, were echoed. And I just feel that if everyone is proud of who they are and not ashamed of how sees them, then they wouldn't, or maybe because I just can't get past the health risk. Right? So I wanted to ask you, in your experience, do you think the health risks are being managed better now. Because I, I recall that when we were growing up, there was a certain uh, first AD who died us getting uh, cosmetics. Uh, we had a lot of people travel to Brazil, to Germany, and they died and all of that. Now, with the meteoric rise of people trying to do this, right? Are we saying that the, the health risks are no longer as bad? Are we saying that technology has advanced to that level where it's not so bad anymore. I'm, I'm just curious. I can't get past the health risk. You know, like yes. me taking my money out to Go and buy trouble. potentially hurt myself. <laughs> okay, so I understand where you are coming from, if you allow me. So, like I said, you know, in the past, if you had to have liposuction, which is the most common procedure done worldwide, you, you have to go into a theater they have to, you need an anesthesiologist to put you under, you know, and then you have to, the surgeon does his work and then the anesthesia will have to wake you up. That does not necessarily have to happen these days. Um, like I said, in our practice, um, we've had 100% success rate because no one has been put under general anesthesia. We tried it uh, to, it, it makes the surgery go faster. Uh, it's more com some patients actually don't come to us because we don't even offer that service. They said they don't want to see the sight of blood. They don't want to see, you know, they prefer general anesthesia. But for me, as a surgeon, I'm more comfortable doing it by local anesthesia. Do you understand? Hmm. So you, you would make a decision 
about what you're about to do. First, by evaluating the person doing it. Okay, you say you are a liposuction specialist. We don't have that training in Nigeria. Where did you get your training? That's the first question you're going to ask. The qu second question is, where are you performing this procedure? You want to see what the place looks like. If the place doesn't look right for you, then you walk away. Um, it's not a must that you must get it done. Remember, you've already done the best you can. You've done your butt exercise. You've lost weight. You know. <laughs> and then if you still, you if you still think that? it's going to help you to to do a little bit of that, doctor, I'm coming. You. I'm going to come you know, to you. A, a mommy makeover is valid. Absolutely. If, a, a woman that is 31 years old who married at the age of 20. Yeah. She has four children. She's a successful banker, successful lawyer. And she has a stomach of, of, of uh, hanging, overhanging. She's slim, but she has an overhanging stomach. She has diastetic uh, recti. You know, no matter how, there's no way you can fix that with exercise and diet. Hmm. That skin needs to come that out. That needs, she to, needs come to come out. Tummy yeah, I agree with you 100%. So, doctor, no, uh, we know the that... The breast is, is dropping and does not like the way she feels. I think it's valid for her to have breast augmentation if she wants. Yeah. That's the position, yeah. Okay, so, doctor, I was going to say quickly, because we are running out of time, we just have one minute left. What about aftercare? Okay. Because we know that the biggest issue is not necessarily the surgery. Aftercare for people, you know... Um, is it better now? Are we having better services now? In one minute, please. Yes, yes. A lot of us, all I think, all the practices now have an aftercare uh, service, um, meaning that you know, for instance, we have a twenty-four hour hospital in Victoria Island. So if at middle of the night you call me, I don't answer my phone. You can always go to our hospital. There's a doctor there that's on call. Uh, our aftercare facilities in Lekki. So most. Surgeons that I know now do have an aftercare facility. We've improved a lot. Nigerian patients are, are you know, they like Rolls Royces, they, but they don't want to pay for it. Mm. That's just the uh, issue that I think is going on. But the doctors are, we're all improving by the day. We are looking for better ways to, to, to do this surgery safely. Everybody is really trying their best. Um, um, and, and, and I think, you know, you, the society should encourage the surgeons. I don't think we should, uh, like I said, there are doctors, there are other people's children and aunts and relatives. So don't cast them out. They've gone to medical school. I think we should support them and encourage them to get more training Absolutely. and encourage them to, to be better at what they are doing. Um, mistakes happen. People die from childbirth every day. Yeah. People drive from you know other surgeries every day but they don't they don't um you know put that in the news you know <laughs> so, so sometimes true. they make the surgeons look like we don't know what we're doing but no surgeon wants a woman walk into their house into their hospital and go out and then dead. carry yeah. their body out nobody yeah, is going to be happy wants to do that. that so um the doctor is not mean it's just sometimes stuff like that happens with every surgery absolutely uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Okay. Nifooshe. I think we'll, we'll come and pay you a special visit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell me, uh, you don't have time, but would you consider one now since we've heard um, Dr. Nifooshe? Never. It's safe. <laughs> doctor, never. Never don't am I that. going she'll, to she'll be come. your client. It never. Never. <laughs> Liposurgery is safe. Yeah. In the and in the right environment in the right say, environment yeah. i think i think the, we can wrap up on that are actually one of the best doctors in the world i know you guys you guys are the best one of the best anchors i've ever spoken to ah. and, uh, I, and i love it that we're closing yeah. on a brother from yeah i mean like you said people die from car accidents yeah. but it doesn't stop people from buying cars Absolutely. right Thanks. so i mean go for it if it makes you comfortable and happy. if it makes you happy do it but i still like to preach self-love yeah you know be yourself <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, somewhere. Be and yourself. i think if you must, original is so much better yeah than if it you could. must do it <laughs> if you must do it but please, when you've done that and you're sure. still not comfortable reach out to a good doctor yes if you if you <laughs> must do it make sure you are in the right environment. <laughs> yeah, I think we can wrap up on that. Thank you so much, Dr. Nifuoshe. Thank now, you. <laughs>
Please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been a very, very insightful conversation. And keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Waste Your Africa and at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. I think everyone is forgetting what plastic surgery is for. If you have a face-eating tumor, you lose a breast or are involved in a car accident, then it's a good idea. Um, that is for plastic surgery, but cosmetic surgery, you can, you can elect to do that. Now, we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening.